Y y yes, Your Honor. Where do we go from here, guys? Tell me, Mr. Guy, where, where are we going from here? Uh, uh, I have got uh, uh, executed subpoena for the um, for the uh, various police the, the files associated with the various uh, police reports for this case. Uh, th this is the one where he is the uh, defendant here and then the complaining witness for the complaining the the complaining witness here is a defendant upstairs uh uh this is the one where where i i had uh the, the bullet removed from the vehicle uh and the uh the state is uh we 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 we're, we're proceeding. We're uh okay. Yeah, don't worry about it. So, Mr. Green, if you ever, how many people did I put in jail today? Right. If I ever have to do that to you again because you violate conditions or at worst pick up a new case, I'm gonna make your bond so high you're gonna flip. The other gentleman in there, I made his bond forty thousand dollars. So, if that's what we have to do to get you to stop picking up criminal cases, that's what we're going to do. I'm ordering you as a condition of your bond to put a GPS monitor on your ankle. I'm giving you a curfew of 9 p.m. to 6 a.m. And I'm also ordering you not to be in possession of any weapons. I'm also ordering you not to consume alcohol or illegal drugs, and I'm going to randomly test you. Do you understand? If you violate these conditions, I'm going to keep you with me. I'm done playing games. Any more drama, I'm just going to set your case for trial as well. It is your responsibility to stay in touch with Mr. DeGuider. He'll tell you if and when you have to come back to court. I'm going to have you go to Victoria, sign a reset. After that, you'll get with your mind for your bond conditions. Behave yourself. Legendary. Ms. Mathis, you are charged with driving while intoxicated. You're facing up to six months in jail and or a $2,000 fine. We're going to do probable cause. You have the right to remain silent. Anything you say can or will be used against you. You have the right to have an attorney present during questions and interviews with the state of Texas. If you cannot afford a lawyer, a lawyer will be appointed to represent you, ma'am. On April 5th, 2024, officers were dispatched to a major crash. The impaired defendant caused a five-car major crash. Witness stated she observed the defendant passed out behind the wheel of her vehicle with multiple airbags deployed. Defendant was unable to maintain focus, balance, or even hold a conversation. Defendant was unable to control her eye movement, where at times her eyes slowly wandered towards her nose and oftentimes away from each other, as if she could not get a clear image of whatever she was looking at. The defendant's speech was also so slurred, it was hard to decipher her verbiage. Defendant was unable to blow into the intoxilizer and was falling asleep while blowing and could not hold herself up. DRD believed the defendant to be under the influence of narcotic and, and was unable to operate a vehicle safely. Defendant admitted to taking three hydrocodone cotton pills that day. Blood drawn was drawn and warrant was signed. Ms. Mathis, I'm going to find that there's probable cause to go forward with the case. I'm now ordering you as a condition of your bond not to drive at all 
for any reason. I'm going to have you sign with me today an affidavit promising me that you're not going to drive. If you drive, I will have a contempt hearing. You'll be facing an additional six months in jail and a $500 fine every time you get in a car and drive. Do you understand? On one ankle, I'm going to give you a GPS monitor so you're not out in the middle of the night. 9 p.m. is your curfew to 6 a.m. On your other ankle, I'm going to put a scram monitor so I know that you're not consuming alcohol and I'm going to test you every week to determine whether you're using any kind of pills. And if I find that you're using unprescribed controlled medication, I will put you in jail and then I'm going to put you in a rehab facility. Do you understand? Yes, sir. How can there be a bond violation? This is the first setting, right? Oh, okay. When she goes with you, then, yeah. I mean, it's... you were ordered by the magistrate to obtain a, an interlock. You didn't get it. I thought she was right. Jeremiah, what day was she supposed to have it? I don't see it. It's, it's the same, uh, it shouldn't be the same. Are you sure? Yes. Yeah, no, I see the bond violation, but I don't see the actual condition, though. Uh, if you click on image, uh -huh. uh, it's right under the word, the personal bond is right there. Yeah, I pulled it up. Where are you looking specifically? Uh, like, where are you talking about where the box is? Like yeah. I see that it says, oh, right. Okay, I see. It says here, and you sign these conditions. Defendant shall have the device installed on the vehicle owned or most regularly driven by the defendant within two calendar days of the defendant's release on bond. <laughs> really? I'm sorry? It's on the last show today. She goes with you, and then let's appoint her someone, and then she can talk to the, to the lawyer. He's, he's lucky no one is no i mean five cars in an accident lucky no one's dead i see it here we go. Here we go. Come up. You were lucky that no one died in that ordeal and that you're not charged with intoxication manslaughter because then you would be facing up to 20 years in prison where the deals when you start making plea bargain agreements start at seven to eight years in tdc i guess we haven't gotten through with you from the ag rob that you had or the prior felony dwi that we had i'm now going to do everything in my power to get through to you that we mean business and that we value our streets and want them safe if that means locking you up, I'm going to do it in a heartbeat. You will now, as part of your conditions of your bond, come to court every Monday and Thursday to take drug tests to prove to us that you're not consuming any kind of pills. On your, one of your ankles, I will put a GPS monitor so that you're not out in the middle of the night because I'm giving you a curfew. On your other ankle, you will get a scram monitor showing us that you're not consuming alcohol. The one time that you violate 
I'm going to put you in jail. I will deem you a public danger and I'm going to make your bond extremely high. You will never get another PR bond. The only reason that you're not going into custody now is because of Ms. Chisholm. Otherwise, I'd be lighting you up. Thank you, Judge. Um, the other thing I want you to do is I want you to start going three times a week to NA classes. I don't care if it's online. I don't care if it's in person, but you must provide proof that you are attending AA classes with a sheet of paper signed by another individual that you have a sponsor that you're actually attending. If you don't do this, you will go to jail. Do you understand? I'm all, one more thing. I know that you want to go. I'm going to have you sign an affidavit promising me that you're not going to drive. And like I told you, if you drive, that's the absolute worst thing you can do. And I will sprout horns in a tail if you drive, because I will have a contempt hearing. Every time you drive, it's an offense that's punishable by six months in jail and a five hundred dollar fine. Every time you drive, do you understand? Okay. Thanks, Thank you, Judge. Thank you, Judge. Well, he's going to tell you his condition. Maybe it's his Judge. Maybe it's his Judge. That was awesome. <laughs>